What's up everybody, my name is Nick Murphy and this is You Can Solo That? You Can Solo That is a series where I go through the games on our shelf that have solo variants. I try them, I play them, and then I review them for you. I have, I, I owe a lot to this series because it's really gotten me to learn and love uh, solo games and now it's a big proponent for Mike and I. When we see a game that has a solo variant, it exponentially makes it more likely that we will buy that game because it's a big, big deal. And so I've been going through them all God, it's been a while now since I've done this series. We've done quite a few and it's pretty awesome. But I found out that this game right here that had a solo variant and I was pumped to try it out. So today we're gonna to be talking about, bam, Sierra West. Sierra West is a new game by Borden Dice that released at Gen Con. Um, we actually played this at Dice Tower Con, but we saw it at Origins and I was instantly like, I'm gonna love this game. I love the theme, I love the look. I just, the, the mechanics seem super interesting, was super pumped and it did not disappoint. I absolutely love this game and I am pumped to have it. And one thing about board and dice games, they almost always have solo variants and a lot of solo variants are done by David Tursky, I believe that's how you say his name. Um, and he does a lot of great games. He's like Petrichor, Anachrony. He did the solo variant for uh, Teotihuacan, did the solo variant for this. So I was like, oh, it's gonna be a banger. So we're gonna get this down. I'm gonna talk about how to solo it. Now I say this with every single video. I'm gonna say it again. I'm not teaching the entire game. I'm just teaching what is different in the solo game. So let's get Sierra West down to the table. Let's go on the frontier. Pan for some gold, except not this one. Pan for some apples. And let's see how it plays. Alrighty, so here is the big old setup here for Sierra West solo version. So for the most part, you're setting things up exactly the same as you would in a two player game. So you build the big old uh, mountain cathedral type thing of different mountainscapes with all the different mode specific cards. You set up the homestead tracks, you go ahead and set up everything for yourself per normal. So you're gonna have your animals to trap, you have your board, you have your frontiers people, and then your deck of cards that will be your action card. So everything for you in terms of the setup is exactly the same. And then you will be playing this game against a man named Hastings. And Hastings here is inspired by a gentleman named Lansford Hastings. He was a man who led a bunch of different pioneers to their demise by suggesting a deadly shortcut. So that is who you're playing against, which I personally find is quite funny. So this is Hastings over here. We're gonna take a quick little look to see exactly how you set Hastings up. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so this here is Hastings' setup. The top part here is the things we'll need to keep. The bottom part here is things we will not need. So the first thing is you need to go find the solo action cards for Hastings, which look like this. You will also pour out the four basic animals that you can trap. Hastings will need his frontier men and his green path person and the wagon, and then the discs that go on the homestead track. Hastings will also need to make sure you grab the mode specific action tile. In this case, we'll choose the one with the apple in the top right corner. And then the other ones you can go ahead and return to the box because we are not playing with those modes. Now the things that Hastings will not need, Hastings will not need his normal deck of action cards. You will also not use any of the special animals that come with a different mode. So in normal cases, we would use this buck here because that is the one for the Apple Hill mode, but we're not using any of these, so we don't need this. We also do not need the normal Meeple Frontiersman. We won't be using that. And Hastings does not need a player board. And a quick note that Hastings will never collect any basic resources, so no wood, no meat, and no stone for Hastings. So once you have all the mode specific stuff you need for Hastings, you're gonna put his stuff out. His five discs go on the homestead track just like yours. Boom, 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 boom. His two front tiersmen are gonna go up here at the mountain base, and then his wagon is gonna come right here next to your wagon. You're gonna take his action cards and go ahead and shuffle them up. And then you are going to put them in a deck and then reveal the first one. And this will be Hastings' active plan. We are then ready to play. So let's go ahead and see how the game differs when you're playing with Hastings, the solo frontiersman guy. 
I also want to mention that we are not going to be teaching all four different modes. I'm just going to be using the Apple Hill mode just for this one. Honestly, the solo game plays pretty much exactly the same with the exception of that one action card that is mode specific. And so I'm only going to teach the Apple Hill mode because that's the easiest one. And frankly, all the rest of them play pretty much exactly the same with the exception of this one action that Hastings can do. So just for record, this is only for the Apple Hill one. So let's go ahead and start with your turn. Your turn, one first things first, you are always going to be the first player because you are awesome and special like that. For the most part, your turn takes place exactly the same. You're not really doing anything differently. You take your turn, you take your cards, you go ahead and slot them behind your spot like you usually do. All that stuff is exactly the same. There is only one small thing that you have to do on your turn that is different in the solo game, and that has to do with how Hastings traps these animals. On the top right of Hastings cards, you can see these little symbols right here that looks like your setup for your cards. Well, on these symbols, it's a little hard to see if there is the trapping symbol. So on Hastings' active cards, that's the card that has the actions that he's gonna be doing on his turn. If it has this highlighted trapper symbol, he will try and trap one of the animals that's on your card. But you do have to pay attention because there are specifically which side he is going to trap on. So we'll go over right now how that whole thing works. If the symbol is blank here, you don't have to do anything on your turn. Hastings is not trying to trap anything this turn. But if one is highlighted like this one right here, you have to check that card in your makeup of action cards. So this one right here said that Hastings wants to trap an animal that's on your leftmost card. So you are then going to look at that card in your player board. And if there is an animal there that Hastings has not already trapped, he will then trap that animal. And as I said earlier, these are side specific. So certain cards will only trap an animal if it's on the leftmost card. And then certain ones will only trap the animal if it's on the rightmost card. So other than you checking to see if Hastings traps any of the animals on your card, there is nothing different about your turn. So let's go ahead and go over to Hastings and see how this solo AI kind of thing performs. So the card that's face up here is considered Hastings active plan. These are the actions that he will potentially be doing on the right side of the card. So at the beginning of his turn, you're gonna draw a new card and put it next to his active plan. And you can see on the left side of the card, there are these arrows. Three of them are filled in and then one is transparent. So the three that are filled in, those are the actions that Hastings is gonna do on his turn. He will then do those actions from top to bottom. And then at the end of this turn, the active plan will get discarded. This will become the active plan. And then next turn, you'll draw a new card and do the exact same thing again. Now there are four actions here and one of them is transparent, but Hastings may be able to do this fourth action. If there's anything in the game that gives Hastings access to the mule, that mule will then go on this spot, which means he will also do that fourth action. In the top left corner, there are sometimes animals. These are animals that you can trap on Hastings' turn, just like you would trap them in a normal game. You're trapping other people's animals. And you can trap an animal that is on either card. So if the plan card was this one with the beaver here, you could trap either the bear or the beaver, or maybe the fox. And then there are some right here that have a question mark. The question mark is the mode specific animal that you use. So in this case, we were playing the Apple Hill mode. The Apple Hill mode specific animal is the deer. So in this case, the question mark would refer to the deer. So now that we've talked about how Hastings gets his actions, let's go ahead and go through all these different actions and see what they do. So the first four actions are very, very simple. The first four actions we look at are the wagon wheel and then these three tracks, the maroon track, the brown track, and then the gray track. So if Hastings has an action pointing at that track, he will just go ahead and move up that track, always getting the benefit up top. Remember that Hastings does not collect meat, wood, or stone, but he does collect gold boot tokens and the mule, remembering that the mule will give him ability to do a fourth action on his turn. Same thing for the wagon wheel. The wagon wheel would allow Hastings to move up on the wagon trail and getting to ignore all of the costs. So he does not have to pay any boots. He does not have to pay any resources. He just gets to move up and up and up the wagon trail. So now the next action we're going to look towards is this one right here, the second action down, the Frontier Movement Action. Now if you remember during the setup, we put two of Hastings' characters, this one and this one, 
on the mountain board. So when you see this action, Hastings is gonna move one of these two meeples to the highest available card, either on the right or the left. Now, how do you know which one you move? Well, that is what you look at this fancy little triangle up here for. The rightmost frontier person is always this one. You can see the shape there is the same. Whereas the leftmost frontier one is always this one. So when you see this movement option right here, you look, then look at the top left triangle and then you move that frontier person up the track all the way to the top to the leftmost or rightmost exposed card. So as I said, the triangles relate to, to these two different meeples. This guy is always on the right side, and this gentleman here is always on the left side. So at the beginning of the game, when you put them down on the board, make sure you keep this gentleman on the right and this gentleman here on the left to make it easier for you to keep track of them. So let's say Hastings is playing this card. He will move his frontiersman, this is the right one, to the top rightmost exposed card, which in this case will go do 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 up to this one. If the top rightmost exposed card was like all the way down here, then he would only go to that one. Again, everything on the right side of the board. And then if we played something like this, this is Hastings doing the exact same thing, but the leftmost frontiersman, and he will go do 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 all the way up to the leftmost card. And again, they go all the way to the exposed card. They don't have to move slowly up the mountain like you do. But they do not excavate those cards. They will just stay there unless they get an excavate action. The next action we're gonna look at is the top action, this shovel or excavate action. So the excavate action depends on where your frontiersmen are on the board. And just like the frontier movement action, you will also look at the triangle to see which one of these two dudes you are going to activate. So as I said, the excavate action is entirely dependent on which frontiermen you're activating and where they are on this board, whether they're up here on a card or whether they're down here on the frontier board. So in this situation right here, we have an excavate action and the rightmost frontier person. This person is all the way up here on a card. So this frontiersman will come all the way back down here to the bottom and then Hastings will get this card. Now, Hastings does not use these cards. He only uses his own plan deck. So this card Hastings will keep, but it'll only be used for points at the end of the game. So you'll just put this off to the side in a separate pile for Hastings, but it won't actually get shuffled into their plan deck. And then per normal, you would overturn ones. If it's one like this orchard card, it would come all the way down here. And then this would be the rightmost exposed card that he would then go to if he had that action. So now what does Hastings do if his Frontiers people are down here on the Frontier board instead of already being up here on one of these cards? Well, that is how Hastings gets buildings. So again, this is dependent on which Frontiers person Hastings is activating, denoted by the triangle up here at the top, and that shows which building Hastings will take. So if we are talking about this one right here, this Frontiersman is the one on the right, and he will excavate the rightmost building and then keep it over his supply, and then again, these will slide down and then refresh like that. If it was one of these cards that activates the leftmost gentleman, this guy down here will take the left building, this one will get discarded how it does in a normal game, and then these will come over and refresh. So that is how Hastings gets buildings. A couple notes on buildings with Hastings. He doesn't actually use them for anything other than points, but there is no limit to the amount of buildings that Hastings can have. He can also have duplicates of the same building, whereas you can only have four buildings and you cannot have duplicates, and he will get a flat three points for every single building he has at the end of the game. So the next action we're gonna look at is the fur trapping action right here, the second one down. This one is very simple. If there's an action arrow pointing at that that fur trapper, Hastings will get one gold for every face up animal on their fur trapping little tile thingy here. So in this case, they will get one, two, three gold for this. And you will ignore the resources that are on the actual tiles, including the bear. The bear here usually gives you one gold whenever you um, use it for pelts. But in this case, Hastings ignores all that and just gets one gold per face up animal that he has trapped. The last action that is on these cards is this question mark card. And this is where you will do the action on the mode specific card we set aside earlier. 
So in this mode, the Apple Hill mode, what the card does is Hastings depletes the two Apple resource tracks and then goes up one on each of the Apple homestead tracks and then gains the resources up top. This one here being two gold. And then this one here is the fur trapping pelt spot, which if you remember, gives you one gold per animal that you have face up. So in this case, he would get two for that for a total of four. And just a reminder that this action will change depending on which mode you are playing with. So that is how Hastings plays. Let's go ahead and go to the end game scoring. So here we are at the end of the game. The game end will trigger in the exact same way once there are six of those special mode specific cards out here. In this case, we have the Orchard out here. Once all the six cards are out, the game will end. You'll finish out that round and then you calculate the scoring. Your scoring takes place in the exact same way. You don't change anything. And for the most part, Hastings scores in the exact same way as well. He will get points based on how many of these mounting cards he collected. He will get one point for every boot token and one point for every gold token. He will score points based off where he is on these tracks times where his wagon is in this whole wagon trail track right here. And he will also still get negative three points for every animal he has not trapped. The only difference is, is again, there is no limit to the amount of buildings he has. He will get three points per building. And he also does not get penalized if he does not get at least four buildings like you do. Other than that, you calculate your score. You calculate Hastings' score. And if you beat Hastings, then you win. If you don't, then Hastings win and you gotta try it again. And there are also alternate difficulty levels that you can play with if you would like a harder challenge. And that is how you solo Sierra West. Sierra West. Sierra West, it's good, I like it. Sorry, I just let the cat out of the bag with that one. I, I, I really like it. The solo variant for Sierra West, you saw how it played. I really, really like it, and here is why. One, the game itself, I constantly go back and forth with solo games on whether or not I want them to be very different from the normal game, or if I want them to be basically the exact same as the normal game, but you just happen to be playing alone. This version is the latter, the one where the game itself is relatively the same, pretty similar. Uh, you're just happen to be playing alone. And, and, I, and I like that. I like both versions of what it comes down to. That's why I keep warring. Which one do I like more? I like them both the same. I think they're both really, really great. So Sierra West is, uh, as you saw, a frontier game where you're, you're playing the cards in the back of your um, in the back of your board and you're doing all the actions and that is all completely the same and I love it because trying to figure out how you want to play the cards and trying to figure out what actions you want to do and what order you want to do them is really really interesting to me and really really fun so all that is exactly the same but one thing I really really like about the solo variant of this game is that it's simple and it's easy and it works well that is something that they almost always work well, but they're not always really simple and easy. A great example is something like Scythe. I really like Scythe. I really like playing Scythe alone. I like playing with the Automa system. The Automa system works perfectly. It works really, really well, but it's really, really complicated. I mean, if once you play it a lot and you really get it down, sure, then it becomes less complicated, but like trying to learn the Automa system is, you're, you're learning an entirely new game. And it's just, it's to me, it's just a little bit too much. I, I, If I'm gonna play a solo game, I wanna be focusing on my gameplay. One thing I don't like in a lot of solo games is when you having to do the other person's turn is taking a lot of time. I had to do that when I um, soloed, uh, when I did the You Can Solo That for Suburbia. You're essentially having to play two games because tile placement in Suburbia is very, very important. So when you're playing against Dalebot, who is the AI in that game, you really have to make sure you're placing stuff in the right place so it's most advantageous for Dale. And it's, it's too much work. I'm essentially playing two games. I want to focus on my game and not have to do a ton of work. So I tend to like games with very simple, easy, but effective solo variants. And that is what Sierra West has. The uh, Hastings AI, super, super easy. You have the active plan, you bring out another card and it just points at the spots that it's gonna take care of. If he happens to get the mule, boom, then he does the one spot more. I love that, it's so easy. It, it's it's um, explained very well in the rule book. It's just simple, like, okay, sometimes you have to look at which frontier person he's using. Is he using the right one or is he using the left one? Oh, the left one, cool, okay, then I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I love it, it was so simple, so streamlined. It took 
less than a minute, 30 seconds to do Hastings' turn. Okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 move them up. Okay, cool, now it's back to me, and now I get to sit here and crunch over. Okay, do I wanna put this card here? And it, it, the, the solo experience was very, very streamlined, very, very nice, and I absolutely adored it. At this point, I mean, I've only played it a couple times, I've only played a couple of the modes, I haven't played them all, but this, I have a hunch, is going to climb the ranks of my favorite solo game. My favorite solo game is the Networks, still, nothing's taking it over, but this one, is gonna climb up. I have a feeling it's gonna go boom, 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 especially as I try out the different modes. I think it's just gonna keep going up and up and up because of the fact that it's so simple, it's so streamlined, and it allows me just to play a game that I really, really like. So that is going to be my You Can Solo That review for Sierra West. Down in the comments, let me know, have you played Sierra West? Are you interested in the game itself? Um, does the solo variant look good to you? Put it down in the comments below. I wanna know what you think of the game. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and come join the Bing Bong fam. Sounds like an insult, it's not, I promise you. So until next time, this has been You Can Solo That? You can, you can solo Sierra West and it's dope. My name is Nick Murphy, and we'll see you later. How's it going? Just want to let you know that we are sponsored by Restoration Games. Restoration Games make wonderful, wonderful games from the past and restore them for you. And everything we film, everything we play is on top of Game Toppers, which is a really wonderful way to upgrade your gaming experience. Go check out Restoration Games and Game Toppers LLC for more information. All right, cool. I feel like I need that one. Ow. Okay. Nick! What is it, big face disheveled Nick? Nick, I want to let you know that we like French toast. Cool. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. Nick. Yeah. Get rid of Mike. What? What? Why would you say that?